This conference will now be recorded. Uh, prior to that, I was working in a management consulting firm um, back in Calcutta. So my uh, specialization is in economics and econometrics. Uh, and yes, uh, I do not come from a programming uh, background. And uh, I think uh, some of you might be happy to learn that, uh, that uh, even though you do not have a programming background, it does not mean uh, that it's a essential skill and uh, you will be uh, left uh, behind the race. So, uh, so that's about me. And uh, so quickly, I take Snigda also, Snigda is economics postgraduate uh, and she has completed her advanced XLR and started an IB. Okay, uh, Kirti is a computer science student interested in learning ML, uh, started learning ML a month ago, learned really basic algorithm and trying to learn furthermore. Okay, uh, Shorodeep is a computer science graduate uh, who has completed his data science, who has enrolled in diploma in data science and uh, he's willing to have more knowledge on machine learning. Okay, great. So the others might also might type in uh, and let's get started with the business okay so so what's the agenda for this short webinar is that i will quickly uh, make you go through that what is machine learning uh, then i will uh, talk about what is ai and how do companies do use it and uh, so all of these are from the company's perspective as uh, basically from the demand perspective uh, and then we come down to you, that is how do we start a career in ML and AI, okay? Like what are the steps uh, that you should uh, really sincerely take uh, when you are really looking for this uh, career? And uh, also like what are the things that you should keep on doing and because it's not just a static thing and uh, it's uh, it's an evolving industry and, uh, and uh, obviously the more you uh, learn, the more you better here are here okay and then obviously i will be open to the question and answers but uh, that does not mean uh, uh that uh like you cannot ask me questions during the session so please feel free to uh like uh, ask me stop me and inter interrupt and ask there's no issues on that you can just unmute yourself or type in any in the chat box okay uh yeah, before I get started, I think uh, most of you guys have been overwhelmed by the uh, by the topics like what, what is data science, what is machine learning, what is AI, right? Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people and a lot of, lot of ones are talking about it. And I personally feel that uh, uh, that uh, uh, we, we, we do talk a lot about it, right? Uh, and uh, And really, uh, we also feel that really is it in the industry that uh, the, the amount that we're talking is it really happening so I will I will try to uh, give some perspective on that aspect that uh, theoretically that that everything we're trying to learn from various algorithms from the various uh, uh, tools perspective be it SAS, be it Python, R, Tableau, Excel, SQL all of these uh, how how important are these uh, when I'm really looking for uh, to get a role in industry? Okay, so uh, that's that. Uh, so that is something which I will I will touch upon. Uh, so between the theoretics and the application part of it, and uh, which is more important, uh, like just the theory or or what what the application part of it? Okay. So from the interview perspective also, like what kind of questions or what, what is the, uh, the interviewer really like to uh, engage upon as a potential, uh, as a potential candidate in you. So this is something which I will, I will, I will throw light upon. Okay. So I've got a few more intros. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so it's Sag Sagarika has just completed a postgraduate in economics. Uh, she's also presently pursuing business analytics course from IB. Uh, Amit is an MBA grad in finance. Uh, I have a brief stint in IB Pro completed SaaS and SQL. Now working on GenPact and OTC domain. Great. Uh, yes, so great, uh, Sagarika and uh, Amit for introducing yourselves. Uh, okay. 
so let me get started with the with the next simple question of that what exactly is machine learning okay uh, one of the things i think uh, uh, in hindsight a lot of people feel that uh, let me let me ask you this question and then let's try to have it as open for as a, as a open forum okay how many of you do feel that a regression is a machine learning problem and in case guys who know it obviously if in case people who do not know it uh just uh refine from the answer because i will be telling that but people because i see uh, most of you are doing uh uh your uh course from iv uh so i must uh consider this question okay so what about others regression is a basic ml machine Okay. Anyone who feels that regression is not a machine learning problem. Okay. So, you know, if you believe in others, okay. So, people who do not know what a regression or what machine learning is, so let's start try to talk about it. Okay. Uh, so basically uh, machine learning is, uh, is is simple i will i will come to this quote by the folks magazine so so basically what machine learning is uh, it's it's a it's a computer program uh, which is designed uh, to learn from an experience e uh, with respect to some task t and performance p uh, where its performance is measured for task t uh, with ex as a, by by a, by a measure p okay so basically there are three things which comes into picture one is your experience the second is your task and the third is your performance measure okay so any kind of algorithm which fits in here uh, is basically uh, comes under the category of machine learning so uh, a lot of algorithms have come up uh, quite shortly and uh, most of them do the same task okay that is a, which 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 really fits into this domain of um, of uh, where where a task gets repeated a n number of times, and the more number of times you do a particular task, uh, the computer does a task. It basically learns from it, and it tries to improve from a, from that from the from that previous measure. Okay, so let's take a simple example of 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 of, of a of a spam filtering. I, I think you guys have come across this example quite often. That how a, a like, like a Gmail. Uh, uh, spam, uh, like filters or classifies your mail into spam and not spam. So here in this case, uh, the task is basically the mail comes and the uh, performance is obviously the number of times you have actually classified spam as a spam and actually classified as a spam as a not spam as a non spam. Okay. So even though regression, the classification, uh, decision trees, uh, they all come under the the the, uh, the umbrella of machine learning. And uh, let me get back to this uh, particular quote, uh, which is from the Forbes, and uh, it states that machine learning is exploding with smart algorithms being used everywhere, from emails to smartphones uh, to marketing campaigns. Uh, what it really means is that everywhere, starting from a smartphone apps, let's say Zomato, Uber, uh, Ola, Swiggy, uh, to Facebook, to Netflix, uh, to, to emails, that is the, the example that I gave, to marketing campaigns like banks or even the, uh, the, the, the retailers, online and offline, they are all relying on machine learning. Okay. So the magnitude of the data that we are generating is also one of the biggest reasons of why this uh, this uh, carrier has become uh, quite demanding in the industry right so why there is a uh, there's a dearth of of people uh, in the industry is that uh, uh, a, a lot of people do not have the essential skills to process that amount of data or make sense of the the inferences so just running a statistical model is not enough uh, making a business sense of that results becomes much more important part uh, when you're talking about outputs or or uh, or 
inferences from machine learning. So uh, the application is everywhere, right? So um, given this, given this, uh, the 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 demand for the data scientists, machine learning engineers, or data analysts, whatever you want to call them, it's huge across the industries. So uh, starting from the captive firms to to the service based firms to product based firms. We will all see that there ha there is a demand for them. Okay, so that's basically. I will not. I will not really get into uh, what exactly are the algorithms uh, because that's really not the objective of this uh, short. I will really talk about from the career aspect, but uh, really again touch down on machine learning AI because that's what we are talking about, right? So um, this is a simple example where a, where you want to predict a person uh, height uh, based on predictive person's weight based on his height. So here we, we see that the data points, the features collected are experience uh, and uh, predicting weight based on height is a task and predict predictions of waste is basically a performance measure. So this is a simple regression problem, which I asked initially. And this, when you when you perform a regression multiple number of times when you perform so when you run run a regression just one time it might not be a machine learning but you once you run a regression on a loop where the regression is happening just not once time it is happening n times and the performance measure which can be a MAPE, which can be uh, any 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 metric which you are using uh, improves then that automatically gets classified into a machine learning okay so uh, I will not really dive deep into um, uh, into the algos. So this, this is just a simple uh, flow chart of what machine learning algos which are used in the industry. So uh, a lot of them are, are are the supervised. This is uh, this is the major algo which is used in the industry from uh, classification, including and these are the applications uh, like market forecasting or demand forecasting. Inventory forecasting. This is something in in terms of clinical, like expecting life expectancy, but the forecasting, uh, classification, image classification, customer retention, diagnostics, fraud detection by banking. So this is the in the industry a major part goes into supervised learning. Hence, uh, knowing uh, the major regression techniques, the major classification techniques becomes very very important uh, as as a skill set. Uh, similarly, for unsupervised learning, you have clustering, uh, you have dimensional reduction, and um, these are the two important chunks, uh, which goes into unsupervised. And there's also something called reinforcement, uh, where you, which is basically a combination of your unsupervised, supervi supervised, and uh, you can't see NLP in the picture. So uh, NLP is just uh, dealing with unstructured text. Okay, so this. And NLP can be uh, it's it's a processing task here when you when you strictly say NLP it's like processing the natural language, uh, but it can come under both unsupervised and supervised depending upon if you have a dependent variable or not. Uh, if you have a dependent variable with NLP it comes under classification, and if you have a continuous variable it can come under regression. So what could be the example of that? So for example you are you are working on a model uh, with Zomato. Uh, and uh, Zomato wants you to prepare a model which can predict the ratings of the of the restaurants. Okay, so ratings here is like a classification variable. Um, it's like one, two, three, four, five, and you need to process the the reviews of the of the customers and uh, use that to just um, forecast the ratings. So that is where this even NLP can come in the count terms of classification. In terms of regression, you can even use an NLP like to forecast. So we we, uh, we did a case uh, where we wanted to forecast the prices of products based on what customers have said about the product. So in that case, the dependent here would have been a continuous variable. And um, in that case, any regression technique, um, even neural networks uh, or LSTM could have been used to predict the prices. Uh, in which category does neural scheme algorithm is required? Uh, it's basically, as I said, uh, neural networks uh, can come into both. It's with definitive feature and under supervised learning, and also on reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, again, you do not have 
uh, any target variable you keep on uh, learning as as every uh, as every iteration uh, but majorly regression neural networks and neural schema uh, comes under your supervised learning where you want to predict something for the neural network applications Others have any questions still here? Anything which you want to ask, highlight? Let me know. Uh, this is something uh, which I wanted to share with you guys is that uh, who starts learning something, uh, I, I must say that uh, most of you uh, and it's quite uh, legitimate to tell that okay the salary is good uh, it's a booming industry and hence i want to join a data science uh, industry right uh, it's it's good paying i can see that my future will be stable and all of that uh, but more more than that if you really want to uh, place yourself and uh, uh, go ahead in this industry you should uh, love the way uh, a lot of applications is happening. So these are subtle things uh, which will help you in the long run uh, because just learning about the algos, uh, like mechanically learning about what is a neural network or what is a random forest or what is a LSTM or what is a classification technique will not help you too much. Uh, but you need to just also appreciate of the various applications uh, of machine learning. So. Uh, this, is a, this is a TED talk uh, by an eminent speaker called Jeremy Howard and uh, I, I will not really play the video here uh, but uh, you guys, I will ask you guys to just go through this, just uh, uh, you can google it, the wonderful and terrifying implications of computers that can learn and uh, uh, just try to go through this and uh, uh, just see that what are the various applications uh, in the world that is happening uh, based on machine learning and why I am saying this to you to do this that it will just give you more interest uh, of not just seeing the, uh, the technicalities of any problem uh, but what is the impact of that problem right uh, what is that is happening once you're learning all of these algorithms and people who are really applying it uh, what are the changes that is coming up this will give you more interest uh, more, uh, I would say, ground um, as you're taking up the journey forward. So this, I think, a must watch for the guys who are really in the beginning stage, um, just to gather and curate more interest into the journey. Okay, so it's a it's a tech talk by uh, John Howard, and uh, again, uh, just just watch out and watch out this video, which is which is very very uh, insightful. So that's what machine learning is uh, in a very snap, uh, in a very, in a very compressed version. That uh, the, the definition which I introduced. Uh, the other hot topic uh, in the data science industry is called artificial intelligence. Uh, now, again, I will not get deep into uh, what exactly artificial intelligence does in terms of the various components and how the algos work. But uh, I will give you a overview of, of what it is basically. Okay. So AI, as the term suggests, is a simulation of human intelligence processed by processes by machines, mostly computer systems. Okay. Simply put, it is the machines trying to mimic human actions, right, and uh, uh, trying to work in the same manner as a human will work. Okay. Uh, and uh, so it's like intelligently working, okay? Uh, Any one of you can give me examples of, of AIs that you have come across, AI platforms. 
or anything which you have come across AI. So let's make it interesting. Not not just. It might uh, be a Chrome con. It, it might be. A, sorry, I didn't get you. It might be. Google's Alpha Go game. Okay. Apple CD. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else? So what do you think CD is using? When you say Shavik. Apple new camera which uses neural net. Okay, so this is very good. Uh, I think Shruti that uh, a lot of of phones which have come up now, including OnePlus, including Apple, including Redmi, they all use machine learning. Okay, all the cameras have machine learning enabled algos, uh, which tries to give uh, more, uh, which tries to adjust the backgrounds and gives you those beautiful shots that you take from your camera phones. Amazon Alexa, right? So Alexa is another uh, uh, another language or another it's, it's assistant by Amazon. So both Siri and Alexa, they work on the NLP. So they they process, they, and they work on speech, they work on NLP. And uh, uh, based on that, they basically convert into just all of these assistant including google assistant including amazon alexa including siri including microsoft cortona all of these uh these are basically apps developed by the giants uh to work upon okay what else uh anything else you guys have self-driving cars yeah definitely so a lot of you have heard about tesla right So Tesla is a, is a major in, in, in US and in car market and uh, they are like the number one in self-driving cars. So self-driving cars is like more featured on uh, reinforcement learning where the system that keeps on learning as it drives and, uh, and it basically uses that all of information to, uh, to automate uh, the, the process of driving. Even systems like uh, IBM Watson uh, from Indian companies like the Pro Homes, okay. So they are also AI platforms uh, with users like uh, AI and smart technologies uh, to basically uh, give you a very very smooth experience, okay. Uh, and, and I'm try I will try to give you an example uh, regarding this again how it is working. And how a lot of things comes in picture when you're talking AI. So, for example, let's say uh, you're driving back home uh, from your from your workplace, and uh, uh, what what happens is that your car is uh, 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 yes, um, and that is something which which I have, which I'm referring to, uh, Shavik, is that your your distance gets calculated from your home, and based on that distance, when a threshold gets passed, uh, the 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 lights are lit or uh, the, the AC gets on and the, the, the geysers uh, has this on the hot water and all of that. So this is something which is uh, the application of AI in real life. And you understand that a lot of com complex algorithms goes into this uh, and not just one, uh, which makes these applications so powerful. And obviously since these are so powerful and hence the demand for people who are making it also increases. Right, so it's glad to know that most of you guys are aware of this, uh, of these applications, and um, and it's just the backend uh, where where that keeps on where it keeps on working. So like image, speech, chatbots, like image image recognition. So there is a app I think which tries to predict your uh, future future self and. Uh, in, and even in, in, in Google, they have the, the image recognition. Speech recognition is something like Siri or, or your Alexa. Chatbots uh, by the companies, the national language generation, like, like Gmail, most of you have seen right now. Yeah, uh, like uh, when you start typing an email, uh, it gets automatically filled, right? So something like that, sentiment analysis, uh, type of models like deep learning, machine learning, neural networks, and uh, Models that like Python, TensorFlow, Java, C. So Python and TensorFlow are the ones 
uh, Spark, these are the ones which are which are mostly used, the programming language. And in terms of this infrastructure uh, used for running models, uh, parallel processing tools like Spark, uh, cloud data, data storage like um, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, they are all used uh, uh, for, for making your system run. So it's just not run on a CPU. Uh, so all of you understand what a GPU is? So a GPU is basically a not a uh, a one laptop, okay? It's like a multiple combinations of, of, of PCs or processing units, uh, which, which generally it gets linked to the cloud where all the data is stored and your model keeps on happening there. Because when you are really working on a big data environment, your simple laptops and your desktops are not able to handle that kind of big data. Okay, so any query that you run, any model that you run, that happens on GPU processing power and not on CPU processing power. Okay, so these are the components of AI, and this again makes a connection to the things which you should uh, aim for learning. That you can just have keep a tick mark. Image recognition, do I know? Yes, no. Speech recognition, do I know? Yes, no. Chatbots, similarly, NLP, sentiment analysis, machine learning models. How many models do I know? Deep learning. What kind of techniques that I know? Do I know Python very well? Do I know TensorFlow very well? Similarly, have I worked on working on uh, parallel uh, processing uh, models like in Spark, or have, have do I know what's the infrastructure of AWS or GCP like? Uh, so these are the things uh, which really comes on uh, when you are really thinking about a carrier in AI. So having knowledge of all of these uh, really puts you at the upper stage uh, when you are really uh, uh, going for that interview and uh, thinking about that offer. Okay. Uh, I also wanted to uh, give you a guy, give you guys about how do companies are using it. Okay. So, like not just applications of 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 Siri and applications of Alexa. Um, giants like uh, Microsoft and Google have made uh, platforms to run machine learning problems. So. I understand that let's say company does not uh, wants to hire someone. It just wants that it has a data and it wants a, it want, wants a platform to run its machine learning models. Okay, so the, the giants like Google and, and Microsoft they have have made end-to-end -end platforms like Microsoft Azure, like TensorFlow, which can build high-performing models for the companies uh, where they just need to implement this solution. And, uh, and the model gets gets done. Okay. So, but again, having the knowledge of TensorFlow, having the knowledge of Azure uh, from the company side is something which they have to get. Okay. And this is again where uh, you guys come into picture. Okay. So, uh, being having the knowledge of these platforms, these suits uh, becomes very, very, very beneficial and essential uh, when you're really thinking about career in AI. Uh, I, I've given you, I, 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 in terms of uh, of the applications, uh, I've given you a, a very simple example of Yelp. Okay, Yelp is a is a is a U.S. based uh, uh, restaurant reviews uh, provider. So it has, uh, so if you want to get a review about any restaurant, so for for example, at fine evening you want to go have some food uh, somewhere, and you want to know that what were students and how are they reviews. So, yeah, so the Yelp is one in the, in the US which is being used a lot. So what Yelp does is that it works on of all of these uh, reviews to uh, basically rank the restaurants and even, even it use uh, the, the photos for image classification, uh, like what would be the interiors, what are the ambience, what are the food like. So every person who tries to upload uh, the image, randomly uploading, just not under any, uh, under, under any category, it automatically classifies it into either it's a, uh, it's a, it's a food uh, or it's a, the ambience or it's about the service. Uh, so all of that gets automatically classified. So this is one of the, one of the uh, Yelp is one of the strongest players uh, uh, in US 
uh, which are doing a lot in, in using a lot of machine learning and deep learning to uh, to generate business value. So it's one of the one of the applications of the same. And uh, it's, again, I, I I see that a lot of of you already know uh, how to uh, basically uh, how the companies are using it. Okay. Uh, now let's come to the most important question of that. How do I start uh, my career in ML and AI? Okay. It's fine you're doing a course or you're thinking of doing a course. Uh, and uh, but but the point keeps on. Uh, I think uh, hindering or uh, keeps on coming to the, the to us is that uh, okay if I do not have the experience uh, or if I do not have programming language background or since I just know it on on pen and paper and I've done few assignments can I really get into the industry? Uh, uh, answer to that is uh, you need to keep on practicing, but you have to have a very structured approach. Uh, we need to develop a very, very proper way uh, as you move ahead uh, in, in, in the career of aspiring for data science. So I've given you, uh, so what I've done is that I have basically broken down uh, the approach into two broad levels, okay? If you really stick to these two levels or these two layers, uh, and then I think you you guys will be able to definitely get the opportunity that you are. First level is the technical skills. It is called the business domain skills. So it's like one complements the other, and uh, you cannot really uh, underestimate any one of them. Okay. So what people generally do is that. They really focus on this, okay? Uh, they really focus on learning different languages, different uh, 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 the algos and different uh, visualization techniques and all of that. Uh, but in that race, they somewhere uh, fall flat on the business domain, okay? And this is where a experience gets differentiated with the pressure. So. If you if you try to put yourself in the position that uh, uh, I I I am like a freshman in data science, so since I have done all of the the, the uh, algos and you have practiced a lot of Python or R or SAS or SQL, so you know it. Uh, but you do not. But you lack the business domain, and this is where you get uh, I would say left out. Okay. Uh, so it's equally important to start understanding what is your background or what is the industry that you are aiming for. Okay, so you know that analytics, machine learning, AI, uh, they they cater to different industries, starting from healthcare to finance to retail to telecom to risk uh, to products uh, to e-commerce. They work on on different uh, uh, different centers, right? So uh, having this in mind, it's very, very important for you guys to start picking down the technical and the domain skills, okay? So when I, when I talk about the technical skills, uh, these are the four things which you should aim for uh, when you are uh, really looking for uh, to create an, uh, a notch in this, in, the, in this. First is programming, which is like, uh, R or Python or SAS. Uh, the general suggestion is that learn at least two languages. So it's important that you learn at least two languages. My preference would be learn Python and R. But people who are really looking for banking as, as a carrier, uh, they can even focus on Python and SAS or R and SAS. Okay. Uh, but learn at least two languages and learn learn a lot. Okay, practice practice a lot so that you are very very comfortable in executing queries in these languages, uh, as well as start learning about statistics. Uh, learn about descriptive, inferential, uh, like uh, what are the insights? Just not about that. Okay, what is the mean and what is the median? 
but what is the insight from that mean? What is the insight from that medium? That is something which you should also focus upon. So describe descriptive as well as inferential uh, and able to analyze those numbers, able to present a story about these numbers becomes very, very important uh, in these fields. Okay. Then comes obviously your machine learning algos. So all the algos that you're talking about, be it classification algorithms, uh, regression algorithms, supervised algorithms, or unsupervised algorithms, uh, the deep learning algorithms. Uh, learn, but again, my suggestion is that if you are aiming to learn two algorithms from regression and two algorithms from classification, learn it very, very uh, fundamentally. Okay. Uh, again, what's the general trend is that uh, we try to learn five things, uh, but we learn half of each of the five things. So uh, when the interview comes and uh, really the, the other person is trying to assist your knowledge, uh, you're able to tell, but not in a more content manner. Because once you start drilling about the really the fundamentals of anything, you become confused or you, you are not able to articulate the concept clearly. Okay. Hence, it is very, very important to understand each one of these algorithms very, very fundamentally so that even you can explain someone on pen on paper. So machine learning algorithms, the more you learn and more uh, fundamentally you learn is something again, uh, which becomes very, very, very essential. Okay. Uh, and then one of the important steps is hackathons. Okay. Participate as much in the online hackathons. Online hackathons are uh, like a lot of, uh, of platforms are there like Kaggle like analytics with there. So companies uh, do come and organize hackathons there and um, start uh, even publishing your uh, work in GitHub. So uh, do a lot of connections on LinkedIn. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm not going to that because there's something which I will tell in the next slide, but, uh, but hackathons, GitHub is something which you should all uh, aim for, okay? If you guys really focus upon these four broad chunks uh, and really practice it, uh, and you know that you're confident about this, uh, then definitely you will uh, be able to uh, give a very sound answer to each or any of the technical questions uh, that you provide. Any questions here, guys, which you want to ask? Uh, Amit, also, if you can please uh, mute yourself in case you're not speaking. Okay, thank you. Uh, my business analytics course is scheduled to complete at the end of this year. I'm planning to learn ML21 Python next year. Also, tab. Also, I'm trying to shift from analytics process and TECS from my BPS. Yes, I think, uh, Shobik. So, uh, yes, you are. As I, as I said, is that the more you practice, uh, uh, the more you uh, are comfortable in understanding the algorithms and making someone also understand. Um, this just gives you the feeling that you are on the right track, right? So just do not uh, aim for completing modules, the different modules which I have stated, uh, but just try to give uh, yourself as much practice it in terms of hackathons, in terms of projects, independent projects, projects from, uh, from all of these um, uh, platforms. Uh, just try to do more and more of them so that, and even in your current role, try to see how you can apply analytics there, how you can automate things, uh, you will in Python or R, so that your mind by default starts functioning in that way. And just do not see it like, okay, I have two courses and I just need to complete five more modules and then I get a job. That's not how it's done. You really need to think and make your actions in that manner so that uh, uh, it's just not completion of courses. Uh, it's just the application of, of everything that you're learning. That becomes very, very important. Because let's say you learn Python and in the next three months you learn something else, let's say Tableau, let's Hadoop and whatever. And you do not do anything in Python. You might be, you might, I mean, might forget Python, right? You might forget the ML which you have learned uh, the last year. 
so just so in order to in order to ensure that just keep uh, that in practice uh, so that the learning stays okay any other questions guys okay so let me talk about uh, the business skills okay so business skills is the one which uh, is learned is slightly not given a lot of importance the first thing is be curious okay uh, uh, so one of the things is that what about the professionals who are in the industry right now okay so for us also it's very important to learn and keep on learning because if you do not learn we are outdated and we can be thrown out okay uh, hence it's very important for you to develop a learning mindset and uh, be curious about new technologies which are coming be curious about what can happen in the next two years you should be able to try to have that frame in your mind that okay in the next two years i see these type of technologies coming and i should focus on learning them okay so be curious we have a mindset like that and also when you are uh, dealing with any kind of problem or problem statement uh, try to analyze it very analytically very structured way so that uh, you are very well equipped to the interviews as well as very well equipped in the process as well okay so curiosity is something which you should guys inculcate as, as a strong uh, uh, as, as attribute second is your uh, ability to translate any kind of business problem to analytic question okay so a lot of times interviewers will ask you that okay you have done this well you need to tell them you need to justify the business value of the analytical solution which you developed so let's say you did a, a case study um, with, with, with any institute or uh, you did it by yourself so you when you presenting that case study this do not uh, so let me let me ask you that in this way that uh, if you say that if i am the interviewer and ask you that uh, okay so if you have done this model what was the model evaluation measure that you that you looked upon so what should be your answer so let's say you did a regression case study you presented it to me and uh, i ask you that what was the uh, evaluation measure what's the model evaluation measure that you uh, that you that you did so what would be your potential answers in case of the regression and others so narin according to narendra uh, the model evaluation measures could be like uh, like r square average or significance of coefficients what about others those others also um, share the same uh, answer as narendra one guys amit ansh anki ansh uh, bhavna kirthi narin narendra has already answered oshin yes swami sagrik all of you guys uh, what do you feel same answer okay and this is where i wanted to highlight so if you just talk in terms of that okay i did this problem and the r square measure was like 96% and the and the and the mave was around let's say 2% and the coefficients were significant at 0.000 um, or 99 99.9% of level of significance this is just the half answer you should not just concentrate on this you should try to link your answer to the value the business driven for example uh you need to sell for example if you're doing a regression you need to tell that what was the impact of 
of this problem on their business okay and whether their forecast improve if they are doing inventory forecasting their loss reduced by 5% or the optimization work and and because of that their profit was by up by something like 2% or 3% so you need to talk about in that sense also. So what was the business problem you are trying to solve? This should come very clear when you're talking about any kind of data science project, okay? And not just uh, and all of that. So these are technical jargons. Yes, they are very important. Uh, but in, in that perspective, when we are trying to uh, kind of warm it at a time of all the jargons that we know and trying to impress the interviewer, uh, what we what you miss in the hindsight is the business question. What is the big answer? What is the big question that you're trying to answer? This is something uh, which we guys really overlook. Okay. Uh, the third is like uh, the industry knowledge. This becomes very very important, and this somewhere uh, will answer your question, uh, Anj, uh, that. Uh, if you do not have that required years of experience and analytics and you're considered as a fresher then then why will a company will hire you okay uh, the most important reason uh, a company will hire someone is that is his ability to uh, not just uh, write codes in python uh, but also his ability to draw insights from the codes or the model that he has developed okay and can speak in a very simple term to a layman guy. Okay. Uh, now, if I do not have experience, how do I show it? This becomes very, very. It's like a chicken and egg game, right? I do not have experience. How do I show it? And if I if I do not join, how will I gain the experience? Okay. Uh, the answer to that is, I said, the more you practice, the more you participate in these competitions, the more you. Uh, do a different kind of, of, of projects, uh, be it online, be it engaging with a certain, uh, with a mentor or, or more of the industry oriented projects that you do, it becomes you, it, it becomes as your selling point. Okay. And you really play around that. And once you're able to convince the interviewer that you have really worked on the, some good projects. Okay. And you know, have the knowledge of your, and you have the knowledge. Uh, and you're just not superficial in, in terms of telling the uh, the numbers, then definitely the fact that even you have less number of experience uh, will slide away. And a lot of companies do hire. So everywhere you will see that at entry level, they will say that one to two years of experience. That does not negate the fact that even if you have zero years of experience, you just have to uh, have to portray yourself in such a way that uh, your experience of uh, 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 of of the of the projects of, of the of the of the concept that you have been have learned, uh, they are translated. Okay, so this is the this I think is a very important thing which you should try is like try to tell a story of every project that you have to try to your friend, try to uh, your mentors. Try to do it and or try to yourself, try practicing it in terms of matter of, of, of a mock interview and try to build up your resume in such a way that it becomes very heavy in terms of the content in it. Okay. And then definitely both you will get a call as well as you will uh, gain, uh, gain a, a proper uh, proper offer uh, when the companies are scouting because a lot of companies are also hiring at an entry level position. They might not offer you a lot as in terms of experience. Uh, but it will be a learning good opportunity to start your your career. Uh, Anj, I hope uh, your question was answered. Let me know. And the other important thing is like networking. So there are a lot of meetups, there are a lot of conferences which keeps on happening across cities, any city which you are, be it Calcutta, be it Kurgaon, uh, Delhi. Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, they all have got firms, they have got meetups. So uh, sign up for those meetups, sign up for any conferences which are happening uh, and uh, try to network, try to network even online, then, then Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, physical meetups and like, like that. Just try to meet and interact with the industry as much as possible. Try to understand the work 
uh, try to sell yourself so that uh, at any time your know, opportunity comes, you are considered. You can talk about the what projects you have done, what is your interest like, and you're really looking forward to kind of opportunities. So uh, this is something. Uh, uh, this is something which you can do. Uh, uh, my own images after that, I'll add a camera in my bag so that it can detect me automatically and log set. Uh, again, it's I, I will first. Uh, I, it's it's a good uh, proposition, uh, Ansh. Uh, but I will see that what is the business value of this uh, problem statement. How will a business really use? So try to first focus on a problem statement and taking up a good problem statement, and then definitely someone from IB can can help you out on this. But uh, yeah, so uh, so I would say that think of a better problem statement than what we have suggested right now. Because also understanding the training, the data, the data you're training is a resource from the company. Okay, the number of times that the images that you need to take, and uh, all of that, it can be very very costly for you as well as the company who will hire you. So again, try to see about the problem statement. Try to think of about the certain problem statement, and then then the algorithm comes. What we really focus upon the algorithm. पहले मेरे को neural network करना है. Okay. uh uh that's a, that's that's the, that's that's your assumption and uh that it might be good in the automobile industry uh but the point is that if i ask you that uh, okay uh that's that's good that you can unlock uh you bike or car by your face But there are number of things you can just unlock it by by the by the key also, okay. And uh, if if a key can be broken and 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 a, and, a, and, a, and a vehicle can be stolen, what is there in terms of of, of the of, of the face recognition, okay? What is the, what is the additional benefit uh, that that something like this uh, gets in? So I will not get get into the uh, these uh, this, uh, this proposition of yours. Uh, but i would suggest that think up about about better better problem statements okay which 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 is really in the industry which is more in learn in, in terms of in line with the industry which you can work upon maybe take up some projects which are already there now in kaggle there are a lot of competitions which you can just work upon and uh, which might be more more suited uh than something like this But you need to have a lot of images because if you want to really build up a uh, deep learning model, you need to have at least a million or billion of images. So imagine the the kind of time that you need to have, and it will be highly biased in your way because you are just using one data point. Even though you have your own face, it will be just one data point. So, so, so in that case, try seeing something else. Maybe Kaggle or Nantix with them, and pick up something from there, and just try to work upon that. Okay. Alternatively, if you want to really do it, you can really go ahead and uh, speak to Pratik or Ashani. They can always assign a mentor to you in this case. So yeah, so this is something which I always wanted to focus more uh, the business part of it. Uh, Is that what kind of business value you are trying to generate from any kind of model? So the model does not play the major role. Uh, the business question uh, or the analytical question plays the the major role in terms of deciding a particular model. Okay. So let's talk about the few roles which are in the industry. Uh, the major roles are like the data scientist, uh, a machine learning engineer. and lp scientist so these are the major roles which are there uh, in the industry so all of these are heavy in in, in itself uh, the major ones are is the data scientist who has like a, a wide spectrum of knowledge from data processing 
to uh, the knowledge of various algorithms to make a sense of the various statistics and uh, interpretations of any kind of ml algorithms okay so a machine learning engineer on the other hand focuses more on parallel processing uh, writing the codes and productionizing it okay so uh, just like uh, pulling up the entire concept and making it solution driven making it production ready is something which a machine learning engineer does and uh, an nlp scientist is one who works more on natural language uh, techniques uh, so these are the three three dominant roles uh, or i would say mici roles mutually exclusive and collective exhaustive roles which are there in the industry whereas a lot of times a lot of roles are like complex uh, like within it that they data scientists and analytics um, consultant or uh, or analyst so they are used in a kind of a uh, in a in a, uh, in a, in a synonymous manner uh, but predominantly these are the three broad roles uh, which which you look for okay uh, and and definitely when you are preparing for yourself uh, uh, you should really make yourself equipped across these so in terms of skills in terms of projects in terms of the business knowledge the domain knowledge start uh, building up your uh, skills expertise so that once you have the uh, interviews you are really able to take them up okay so uh Ansh, i think there is a there is similar problem in analytics with their uh, about cap pricing so it has the data from uber i think uh dummy data so you can have the prices even so you can have the dependent in that case okay so you can look out for ab uh practice problems there you have very similar problem on a cap industry okay so this was all about uh, from my side uh, so i hope uh, you enjoyed this short session uh, with me uh, and uh, my my real uh, i would guide you that guide guided take away for you would be that when you are just not focus on the algorithm just not focus on the the uh, the tools they are really important uh, there is no uh, second point to that but also start uh, trying to see the business that what kind of uh, of of business applications of any analytics solution or product is doing okay so whenever you are doing any project whenever you are doing any case study just try to equally focus on the business part of it so that when you are presenting it to the interviewers when you are trying to prepare for interviews uh those uh those opportunities where really become uh useful and you can turn out that going off yes bhavna i will be blunt with you that uh, major companies uh will not uh prefer a cap okay but then it does not mean that you will not uh, you will face a lot of difficulties a lot of companies do uh, do understand if you can provide them with a solid reason of why you had a gap and uh, and again having a good knowledge and having a good profile uh, will always compensate uh, with that gap so if you can justify that gap and present um, your current profile with a lot of knowledge with a lot of confidence uh then there's it does not uh will not they will not give you a lot of lot of of issues uh i i i told you uh uh prasanna so the the these five things uh the more you practice ml based algos start learning them start practicing them start applying in your current role 
just analyzing the data, not predicting anything, start predicting something, start building a model, start seeing opportunities in your current role, start learning, start trying to do uh, open projects. Institute from IEV, if you are shipped with IEV, right? try to do as many projects, and that's how you ship the carrier. So try for uh, these any other questions guys just let me know I have a call from uh, from like the next five minutes um, but but I will be happy to answer your questions by that till that time. Anything? Great. Uh, good to know that uh, you like the session. Uh, yeah, in case of any queries, uh, you can always drop me an email at uh, is my email ID atendu.kanguli at the rate uh, gmail.com and uh, I will report back. Okay, so all the best, guys. Uh, I hope you all guys make a transition as soon as possible and as uh, beautifully as possible just that you need to keep on practice have faith have confidence and step by step I'm sure that you sh you all will be able to crack uh, the job that you're aspiring for okay so thank you all you all the best for the for your forthcoming future okay great to have all of you guys bye bye